For today's video, I'm out in Oxfordshire exploring the local fields. And it's really exciting because this is where my wildlife photography journey started. When I was about 18, I used to live around here and I spent hours and days exploring these areas looking for wildlife. So it's so great to be back here. And if you've been following my channel for a while, you'll see that a few of my old videos have been filmed in this area as well. So you'll know that there's a huge range of stuff that we might be able to find today and tomorrow. That could be barn owls, roe deer, brown hare, foxes, fallow deer, muntjac, just so much. I'm not promising you that we'll see anything, but there's a really good chance that we will find at least a couple of those species. I was actually out last night, although I only had one hour after work before it got dark. So the main purpose of that was to set up my trail camera. And I actually had two of them for the first time ever, which I've put out for three nights. So I'm really excited on Monday morning to pick them up and see what stuff we might have recorded on them. So yeah, make sure you stick around for that because I've had some exciting stuff on that before. And last night, although I was only out for an hour, I did see some roe deer. Although they were distant, it was just so nice to spend a bit of time with them in the evening sun. So that was really exciting. Now, for, your, for those of you who are interested, I'm just going to show you quickly. I'm going to be using the Canon 300mm f2.8 lens and then the Canon R6 Mark II camera body, um, which is just an awesome combination, especially when the weather isn't so sunny. Uh, it's a bit grey and cloudy and it's just going to yeah, allow me to get pictures even in low light situations. So when the sun sets, I can probably carry on for another 15 or 30 minutes or so. Um, so hopefully that can come in handy later on. Anyway, enough talking for now. Let's get going and see what kind of stuff we can find. After just five minutes, I had my first glimpse of some wildlife. It was a great sign of things to come for the rest of the video. So uh, we found a pretty large group of fallow deer, which is really nice to see. They're quite far in the distance, so I'm not going to get any pictures and I can't get closer without disturbing them. So I'm just going to sit here um, from this distance where they seem pretty comfortable with me being here. I know if I get any closer, they'll all just get up and run. So I won't do that. I'm just going to sit and watch them for a bit. I can show you some video. It's going to be pretty far off, but at least it'll be nice to show you. And then we'll move off and see if we can get anything else that we can get a little bit closer to. It always amazes me how wary the deer are around here. Um, I'm about 150 meters away and they can see me and they've, they've all sort of stood up. And whilst they're still there, they're definitely keeping an eye on me. And it just goes to show how difficult it can be to get close to them. And that's why it's so special when we do. And like I said earlier, if you've seen some of my other videos, you'll see that it is possible and you'll see how amazing it is. And I really hope I can show you that later on today as well. All right, this is really cool. There are three fallow bucks in this field ahead of me. And then also a road here as well. But yeah, the three fallow bucks is what I've been trying to film. Uh, they're pretty far away. And yeah, same as the other ones, they spotted me instantly. So I don't think we'll get close up pictures, but amazing to see three bucks just hanging out and grazing together. Yeah, so cool. But let's move on and see what else we can find. So I'm just near where I set up my trail cameras yesterday and I thought I'd just have a look to check that they're still there because I've had one stolen from this area before. The first one's still there. The second one, I'm a little bit concerned because I can't even see where I put it. <laughs> so yeah, who knows? But my logic is if I can't even find it, then I hope no one else will. Uh, so yeah, come Monday morning, I just hope that I can find the spot where I left it 
and it will still be there. Um, but yeah, let's see. Anyway, I'm just heading now towards an area where I tend to place myself if I'm just going to sit somewhere for a couple of hours and I usually see at least some roe deer there. So yeah, hopefully we'll see that. Um, maybe some munchak as well. And hopefully some brown hairs, but I don't know. It doesn't look too likely at the moment. I set myself up on the edge of this field. I lay down and just waited to see if I would be lucky enough for anything to cross my path. So that deer we just photographed, the muntjac deer, is not actually a British species, it's not native to the UK and it gets a lot of criticism, a lot of people think that it shouldn't be here. But what they don't necessarily say is that the fallow deer shouldn't be here and that's the deer we saw earlier. And they're also not native to the UK, they've just been here so much longer that maybe people don't realise they're not native or they just accept them now as part of the landscape. But my sort of issue is that a lot of people who will talk about the animals that shouldn't be here and that they want to get rid of, they won't talk about the animals that should be here, which aren't. And by that I'm referring to the lynx, maybe even the wolf, those larger predators. And the thing is, they come hand in hand. If you have those around, then you can control deer populations so much more. So if you want to get rid of the mudjack, then part of the answer to that is to bring those predators back. But yeah, that just isn't something that these people really want to talk about. And I just wanted to bring it up because I think it's a really interesting debate. And as a wildlife photographer who lives in a country where there aren't lynx and wolves, then I'll photograph whatever I can. And if I can have an awesome moment like that with the muntjac, then yeah, I'll take it. And I'm very happy with it. So the light is starting to go now and I'm slowly making my way back home. I always like to give myself about half an hour to do the walk back because I like to take it nice and slowly as I know that there's a lot of wildlife around at this time of day and I like to give myself enough light so that if I do see something I can still get decent pictures and that is what has just happened now. There were a couple of road here in the field that I could see through the hedgerows Unfortunately, they spotted me first, so they've moved on now, uh, but one of them stopped long enough for me to get a very quick picture, which I'm actually really pleased with. So have a look at this.
So that is everything for this evening. I haven't seen as much as I'd have hoped to, but that Muntjac encounter was so great, so special, and I'm really glad I got to share it with you. Hopefully I'll catch up with you tomorrow. I'm hoping to be out, but the weather looks pretty grim, to be honest, very rainy, so I might decide to stay indoors for that one. Either way though, I will catch up with you soon because remember, we've still got the trail cameras to pick up on Monday morning and I am so excited to see what they have hopefully captured over the last couple of nights. Good morning, I've made it out nice and early and it's dry at the moment. It rained a lot overnight, but I think we've got a few hours now where the forecast is clear. Well, not really clear, it's pretty gray and misty, but yeah, no rain for the next few hours. Fingers crossed we can find some wildlife in that time. meters away over there and I'm not going to get any closer. I think maybe it's gone into roost for the day. Um, so yeah, I don't want to be disturbing that. I'll wait for 10 or 15 minutes to see if it comes out again, but I could go home right now and be completely satisfied with this morning. That is just awesome. It put on such a cool show for me. Yeah, uh, it's just indescribable. Wow. What a feeling to see such a beautiful bird. And I can't believe I've only been out for about half an hour. 
shower this morning and to think I nearly decided to stay in bed. It just shows, you know, always, always set your alarm and get out early when you can. Anyway, let's see if the barn owl appears again, but if not, we'll go a little bit further into the fields and see if we can find any other wildlife. That is amazing. These are definitely some of my best ever barn owl pictures. I can't believe it. I've spent so long, you know, over the years looking for barn owls and yeah, I'm so happy that, that these are definitely my best pictures so far of the barn owls. Wow. That's awesome. It's starting to rain a little bit now and I think I'm going to head back. I've only been out for a couple of hours but it's been absolutely awesome and I couldn't have asked for more this morning. To have seen two barn owls is just something that's just crazy and rarely happens. Even to see one is so special. So yeah, I feel so grateful for that. I'm going to head home, dry off a little bit and then tomorrow morning I'll catch up with you again to pick up those trail cameras and see if we've managed to film anything cool on them. So it is now Monday morning and I'm navigating my way through all of these muddy trails. It's rained so much over the weekend but thankfully it was mostly at night so it didn't affect what I was doing. Uh, but yeah anyway Monday morning on my way to pick up the trail cameras I've brought my camera just in case because you you just never know uh, but I have only got about an hour until I need to start work so even if we do see something then I won't be able to spend too much time with it. Anyway. Let's pick up the trail cameras, and fingers crossed we got some cool footage on them. much on this trail camera. Uh, I wasn't expecting to get a lot on it to be honest. I thought it might be cool to try and get some animals crossing the water or going down for a drink. I do think we've maybe got a couple of different animal species on there though so that's exciting. We'll have a look on the big screen. But anyway, first trail cam is secured. Let's go and get the other one.
I had high hopes for the second trail cam. This is a spot where I used to leave it and I got tons of action on it. Sadly though, I was left disappointed this time. I'm not sure what went wrong because the camera had triggered when I walked past, so maybe we just got unlucky. Thankfully though, I have a really fun video from the first camera to show you, and I was so happy to see this brown hair because they deluded me all weekend. I hope you enjoyed the video and thank you for watching. If you liked it then please do consider subscribing or leaving a comment and I'll see you next time.